So I want to get into a conversation about the promise and the perils of AI and what you see, and also the dynamic with respect to China, which we saw you talking about with Fareed there. Uh, but before we do that, I kind of want to start with just you as a scientist, because I think a lot of people know about uh, the Eric Schmidt who led Google during its period of explosive growth, and not that many people um, think of you as I do, which is primarily as a computer scientist and engineer first. And in this book, you wrote about AI and the period we're entering with AI as a sort of um, polymath on steroids. So this notion that AI will enable us to do things uh, in science that have never been done before. Uh, can you say more about that and uh, what the upside of that uh, in terms of the promise will be for people? So, so the gains in science are extraordinary right now, and I don't think people understand them. Um, I am a computer scientist, and of course, by, by training, but not a particularly good one now, but I do understand science. And I'll give you an example. In material science, the development of new materials for uh, hardening, energy release, uh, climate change, crucial for everything. Um, in terms of uh, drugs and drug discovery, the alpha fold, uh, which is the discovery of essentially all of the interesting proteins, has shown us that we can actually predict uh, drug sequences and the way in which uh, they'll interact in technologies that are really extraordinary. And what happens is that the computer basically takes the idea from the human and then goes through all of the scenarios at roughly the same time, much faster than a human can do. So what I like about AI and science is it's a really good example of the first real phase of AI, which is humans and AI collaborating to solve really important problems. And you're gonna see the, this is just the beginning of an explosion, climate, diseases, physics, chemistry, math, obviously, things like that. 